The Good Buddies Anime Podcast is hosted by two rowdy, foul-mouthed American cowboys. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, Good Buddies, what's up and welcome to the Good Buddies Anime Show. I am your flu buddy, Roger. And I'm your good buddy, Brandon. Oh, no, he's here. Yeah, I'm actually better now. I don't yeah. I'm I'm through the worst of it. I just don't have very much energy. Oh, uh, I can't be very loud. You're or not also, like contagious and everything. No, you're just no. You're I'm just not hurting. about to. I, I'm I'm well past my all my phases of the flu. Uh, my boy's just um, feeling the hurt. Yeah, I got it on. I started feeling strange on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the end of Christmas Eve, I was shivering. My teeth were chattering. I don't know. I, I knew there was something wrong because I'm never cold. Yeah. Um, and I'm certainly never like my teeth are not chattering. And then I woke up on Christmas, felt like ass. And it was just, you know, downhill. all downhill from there until oh, it was baby. uphill. I worked my, my first day since Saturday today and didn't much care for it. I bet it was okay. All I right. took it easy. Well, at least my store is kind of laid back and in, in it's a sense that I can take it easy. Also, Brent is sick too. So my oh, boss baby. is out as well. Everybody's family. Yeah. Well, Good buddy Roger, let me tell you, I'm glad you're feeling better yeah. because I don't know if you realize it, but <clears throat> it's showtime. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fifth annual Good Buddies Year in Rewards! Beep, 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 beep. Yes, that's right, all the stars are out tonight. I'm here on the red carpet. Oh, oh good buddy Roger, hello, what are you, what are you wearing? Uh, I got my Earth AD Misfit shirt on. Um, my wife got it for me for Christmas. <laughs> pretty punk rock, you know? That is pretty punk rock, dude. Uh, <laughs> I'm still in my fucking workout. I got the Sami Zayn shirt underneath yeah, this. Yeah, there you go, dude. He goes doing his little dance. Usually do my plain white tees, but uh, didn't couldn't do your laundry yesterday. It was not good. Anyway, yes, that's right. We're here recapping our favorites from this past year, 2022 from the winter season all the way through the fall. You've heard us talking about this bullshit all damn year long, and we are here to tell you what are our top fives <coughs> for animes, top fives for intros and outros. Mm-hmm. We got some special mm-hmm. categories. We got the good buddy classic categories. Roger, let us just get to it and hit the shit. Yeah, man. Oh, let me let me pre-apologize for any times that I do cough in this episode. I probably will not be able to cut them out. He's got his he's got his big bottle of cough syrup yep. here. The orange stuff, the good stuff. Yep. But uh you know, sometimes one's yeah. going to slip out. Yeah. But uh let's get on to it, baby. All right, let's man. start. Tell us where we're going. Let's start with our top 5 intros, our OPs okay. as they are known. Okay. Uh and Roger I would like you, my flu buddy Roger, to go ahead and take the lead on this one. What is your number five? Number five. My number five actually might be shocking to some. It might Uh-oh. be shocking to you. Uh, but it is, I, I mean, it's not shocking that it's going to be on any top. But okay. the, but the fact that it's five. Maybe number five. Uh, my number five OP is Chainsaw Man Kicked Back by Kenshi Yonezu. Very cool. Yep. Yep. Um, excellent. I mean... Everybody's went over the the opening. The animation sequence of it is fucking stellar. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. Uh, the song, it, you know, it is. I well, it's the weakest of all of the like musical songs on my top five. Yeah, I feel. it's kind of mellow. Like, so, yeah. d- despite how it's not heavy. mellow, it rocks. But it's just yeah. No, it, no, just, no, it doesn't. It doesn't stab. Yeah, you know, I like a good stab. Yeah. I, I think it gets good at the end where they start doing, you know, like your the, the, dan- the dancey future demon and stuff comes yeah, out. Yeah, that's that's where the song really starts getting good. But yeah, cool, there, it's cool. just it falls slightly flat for what is a really good song. Very good. Very um, good. but you know, for the rest of the list, I mean, it just doesn't go as high as as they do. But uh, yep, that's my number five. What's your five, buddy? My number five, uh, and you might be shocked to hear this one, uh, is Kickback by Kenji. <laughs> there we go, starting off strong, good buddies. <laughs> I this look, is a good buddies awards. It, it's a very good intro. I love it. Better reviewers than I have already broken down every little bit of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, check out fucking what's his butt mother's basement. He's got an incredible breakdown of it. Yeah. Every single thing. They fit a pretty rad dick joke in there that like you wouldn't even know, but he explains it all. Uh, I'll just go ahead and spoil that one. So the whole thing is, you know, there's twice in there, once when they're bowling and once at the end, toward the end where you see a giant gold ball. Gold ball, of course, being kintama, which is apparently uh, Japanese slangs for testicles. 
and right in the middle, if you time it out, if you look at the time, when that first one shows up and when the last one shows up, they're the same distance from the middle. And right in the middle is when uh, Maki is like kind of chilling with him and he gets a nosebleed and the chainsaw's growing out of his head. That is the dick. Oh, I see. It's basically perfect. But it's <laughs> the thing is like, I, I understand it. Like you said, it's really good. It's really huge. There's tons of movie references. It is absolutely incredible. And yet, I don't know. It just didn't do it for me like some of yeah. these other ones did, yep. quite frankly. Uh, but it's really good. It is really fucking yeah, good. Yeah, it is. It is. It's very but, good. Uh, yeah, that's that's that. That is our number five. Uh, we linked up on that one. Okay. Well, let's uh, see if we link up on this one, dude. I'm going to go to number four here. I fucking doubt it. I actually go. don't know. I, the only thing I wrote on this one, because I don't know the artist or the title. Oh, boy. I was having trouble finding it. It's a Keep a Made War. OP. <laughs> It's very good. Yeah. So it's. I think it's the the actual cast. Yeah. Of I, the show. I first think of all. so, but I. I know. There's I know so that much that happens in yeah. that song. It's fucking bonkers. Yeah, and the, the the intro for the show is fucking awesome, and the song fucking rips. It's so uniquely perfect to that show. Mm. Uh, that's what I really like about it. Yeah, man. Makes um, sense. and that, I, I mean, it definitely makes it better with the actual voice actresses singing in it. Uh, but yeah, it, it rips. It's so much fun. That show is, uh, is wildly fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it's my number four. It's, I just have a keep it made war OP. Very good. Go, look it up. You can type that in. That'll get you to where you're going. Look, that show and that song whip ass. So yeah, yep. hell yeah. Uh, my number four for this one is, uh, from a show earlier this year that man, mm, mm really good show uh and it has a lot to do with music so this one makes sense it's cheeky cheeky bon bon by queendom that is the intro for ya boy kong ming oh uh, yes 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 uh this one's actually a cover <coughs> of a hungarian club song uh queendom's version i like a bit more like i did check out the original and they're very similar obviously you know same rhythm and everything uh but queendom's version is a little bit more chill it's got these smooth kind of sultry vocals uh, while still keeping that party feeling. Also features uh, a bunch of shots of the cast like grooving to the beat. Not gonna lie, I tried to learn the little dance they do. Mm. He's like, he's like, da, 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 da. like one of these. And mm-hmm. then they do this thing where he's like, you do you do the uh, with the waves and then you kind of uh, circle around with it. I can't do this shit. But I'm sure you had fun watching me try. Yeah, uh, point is, it's a rad song, rad opening. I think probably the best opening of that season. Certainly not, obviously not the year in my opinion, because I got three ahead of it. But great show, great intro, love it. What you got for number three? Number Marty? three, oh. I've got Call of Night, Detenshi by Creepy Nuts. I like that one. Um, I the, this song along with the the ending song, which may or may not pop up later, <laughs> um, or auto adds immediately to the playlist to my my anime playlist and also to the store playlist. This Very shit fun. bumps in my store all the time. Um, I'm a big fan of Creepy Nuts. Yeah, Creepy Nuts is very their, good. Their music is awesome. Uh, but the opening, the style of of uh, Call of Night altogether is really good. What 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 drives it is just the song is Absolutely. stellar. Yep. Yep, that's uh let's see, that is Detenshi by Creepy Nuts. Good and track. that was my number three. Good track, cool show. All right. Uh my number three is a different kind of nuts. I got Mix Nuts by official Hige Dendism. These nuts. D-nut. No, I got Mix Nuts. That's from the, the first intro for Spy Family. Uh really awesome. I absolutely love this one. Rad intro for a rad show. Combines these car chases, these classic Bond style silhouettes, and then goes into this storybook style that shows the contrasting personalities of our three main characters. Uh the song's also like just fucking perfect. It's got that driving piano rip and then that rad swell. Da, 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 to that just ooh, 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 it feels good. Uh really rad. You know, got some horns in there. Feels like it feels right between a slice of life and like a fucking spy show, which is exactly what you got to have mm-hmm. for this one. And it works really well. I love it. Um, what you got for number two, my dude? Number two. Number two, actually, uh, could be a shock. Mm? Could be a shock that's mm-hmm. only number two. 
Uh, but it is the opening for Mob Psycho 103. It is one, the one and only one. One and only one. Yeah. Which is going to be a, a great joke probably for Brandon. Uh, performed by Mob Choir. I do love Mob Choir. I mean, it's either your number one or two. Hmm. Uh, but if you've ever seen a Mob Psycho opening, there's no more that we need to say. This is, I think, my least favorite of the three opening songs. I, I'm with you. Uh, but it is still a favorite song. Yeah, so. it's still, it's still in terms of anime intros, uh, way, way up there. I would say it's my third. Yeah, the third, third. Yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, it fucking rules. Um, yeah. The song just absolutely, like, it, it, it's really weird trying to, you know, put the mob choir trio into into order. But, um, yeah, I mean, while it is the weakest, you know, any of the other ones probably, I don't know, they might not have beat the song that has my number one. We'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see where Brandon goes. We'll see how, how what's your number two, dude? I'm I curious. fear we may have. We might. Up full, we, pretty close. On yeah, these. we might have. Because uh, my second best is also won by Mob Quad. All right. What's your number one? Well, let's go ahead and get to it. Uh. I got Hadaka no Yusha by My Body, Ranking of Kings, Ranking opening of Kings, two. second opening, yes. Um, is it the is it the greatest opening of It's Yeah. It's my favorite of the year for sure. It's yeah. really goddamn good. Yeah, man. nothing tops it, dude. The not only does the song slap, but the way that mm -hmm. they put the uh the visuals together yes. with the song. Yeah. It is those fucking, fucking slow mo horses. Yeah. Do, do, do. Yeah, oh and when the God. like where the the music drops and the distortion kicks in, the guy starts belting the songs out, and the mirror shatters. All that uh, that area, and then the, the king is swinging the the fiery axe or whatever. Yeah, dude, that shit is fucking next it's level. It's fucking so. It's, that it's, shit is amazing, dude. I wrote down, and here. I'm so glad you mentioned it because yeah. I didn't even consider that uh, initially. As I thought that was going to be a 2021, um, but you mentioned it, and I'm like I mean, obviously that one is. There's just it's yeah. untouchable, dude. It's, it's it, so I wrote good. down here, it's basically a perfect OP, Imo. Uh, starts with these little whispers over these acoust deep acoustic strums. Bogey and, Bogey and uh, Kage wandering alone before it opens up with the drums and the heavy vocals and the world is growing around him. New people, new places, friends and foes, all this stuff. Triumphs and heartbreaks. It's all there. Perfect little 96 second opener. You said shows baby you, Miranja in the mirror. You know, that yeah, baby. Fucking, oh, yeah. my God. And it, 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 it shows you enough to hook you without really spoiling anything that I fucking love it. And then, mm -hmm. like, once you watch, once you get further into the show and realize what some of these moments are, it just hits you even harder. Mm -hmm. I was actually like, you know, I did what I always do, and I've watched a bunch of my favorite OPs to try and put them in order here. And I'm not going to lie, this one, just watching that intro, I started to tear up a little bit, man. That's a fucking it's good. beautiful show. Yeah. It's a beautiful show and just a damn near perfect intro mm -hmm. i really love yep. it yes that's uh haraka no yusha by vondi uh bondi i guess ranking of kings second uh op fuck me that's a yep. good fucking yep oh it's good gotta check it out if you haven't yeah man you gotta check that one out all right man let's get on to the outros you want me to start this up since you started that one sure up? go ahead all right my number five ending ed as we say uh, outro of an anime for the year 2022. I'm going with Kaze Hana by Hitori. That is the outro for Dance 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 You, mm. which is a fucking rad show. Uh, I, I I almost forgot how much I love this fucking show. Doing my list here, but uh, you know I love me some mixed media in my anime, and this ending is a feast for me. Uh, it's got these little sketches on graph paper of our characters. They come to life dancing through the credits, escaping the paper, and they're, like, doing this little, like, they're, like, paper cutouts of the characters still moving and animated, uh, spinning and dancing together. Song is super chill. The animation's rad. Show was really special, and I don't know that it got all the recognition it deserved, so I'm dropping this one in at number five. Really rad. Love Dance 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 Here, and this song uh, Kaze Hana, Kaze Kamahana by Hitori. Nice. Uh, really fucking rad. What you got for number five? Um, this is a slight cheat, but not, I mean, it's oh, number here we five, go. so here we go. Here uh, we go. You, you, you guys, can, the good buddies can pick which one they think is five and which oh, one is no. six. Uh, I couldn't decide between the Spy Family uh, endings, which one I liked. They're both really good. Yeah, so I put, uh, I put Comedy by Gen Hoshino and Color by Yama on there. Just, just both those endings. 
I, I watched them like three times a piece, and I'm like, I don't know which one I like more. I just know really that at good. least one of these belongs on here. So yeah. I was like, fuck it. We're going to put it at my number five because I thought that was the an app spot for it. And um, you can decide which one to, which one is better. I could not. Yeah. So If I um, had to pick, I'd probably go the first one, but they're yeah. really both really fucking yeah, good. Yeah, they are. They are. Uh, and the, the outro sequences for them are amazing, too. Uh, they're, yeah, they're just... Uh, Masterclass Spy Family, excellent show. Really, really good. Uh, music great. Uh, the openings and outros. Um, the openings didn't make it, but you know, definitely these outros were were so good. Uh, all right, that's my number five, Brandon. What's your number four? My number four. Uh, I went with a show that I didn't actually follow all the way through. Um, it got kind of kind of stale for me, but the outro on this one absolutely stellar. And that is Shikimori's not just a cutie's outro. That is Route Blue by Yuki Nakashima. Uh, super chill track. The visuals really do it. It's got these like cool video game visuals. You remember the outro for um, Horimiya? Uh huh. It's kind of like it looked like some little Animal Crossing yeah, stuff. They're and they're like walking falling through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they basically do that with this one. It's like this it's little like 3D isom- essential. Right. This one's like a little like isometric, like 2D going down the street kind of thing. Uh, but the whole thing here is that you know the show is you got this <coughs> fucking dude who is absolutely a bad luck magnet like shit's constantly hitting him in the face and he's almost getting hit by cars but his rad ass girlfriend who's cute and also super cool keeps you know saving him from the stuff so you get basically it's a reverse paper boy where as they're walking like stuff keeps coming at him and mm. she's like ping ping like jumping on in the way of it moving him picking him up so he doesn't step on that all those skateboards that just flew by pulling him out of the way of cars and shit like that it's really fucking cute uh and then right at the end you get a little surprise where a, like a soccer ball is about to hit her in the face and he jumps in front of it and then it gives you like a like close-up shot of him with like a bloody nose being like hey. Yeah, and like her being like, "Oh my god, it's super." Yeah, your cute, boy dude. is a real Eugene from Hey Arnold. Absolutely, he is Eugene. Uh, yes, and then <laughs> and then you remember that episode of Hey Arnold where badass. where he was convinced that Hey Arnold was the unlucky one. Yes, uh, Hey Arnold. I think, Arnold I think you might be a Jinx. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that Jinx. Sh- I'm the Jinx. Uh fucking Hey Arnold was really good. Yeah. Uh, speaking of old cartoons, they just put up the Ed, Ed, and Eddie and the Dexter movie on fucking Prime. I'm about to watch the fuck oh, out of nice. those when I get home. Woo! But yeah, uh, Shikimori is not just cutie. Route Blue by Yuki Nakashima. Really cute. Super rad. What do you got? I have uh, Daybreak by Aimer, which is the uh, Demon Slayer Season 2 uh, outro. That was another one I almost forgot mm-hmm. was this year. <laughs> yeah. Because it technically started like in December of last year, but you know yeah. the bulk of it was in yeah in twenty twenty two. Um, but yeah, the the song. I mean, Aimer they they produce they they're they're across a few anime now. Mm-hmm. Um, notably, they were one of the outros for uh, Vinland Saga. Uh, I think they've done some intros. I mean, I I've, I've definitely heard their music a few times. Uh, I like them. They're kind of a more mellow rock band, but mm. um. The the song for uh, for Demon Slayer that they did uh, actually rocks quite a bit, and yeah. it's it's a great song. Um, and then you got all the you know beautiful uh, like little pieces of art they did for the the outro there with the, ma- the different characters, and then the you know uh, what was his name uh, Uzui Uzui, Uzui yeah. and his wives, yeah. Um, not to mention like all the lights and the kind of like mm-hmm. Japanese. Uh, uh, festival style art yeah. that that season had um yeah it just it all melds together very well um and i really like that song a lot so it's good it's good stuff. yep yep uh that was my number four buddy what, what what you got so for number three i have Mado no lullaby by rena sato that is the voice actress for ronko and that is from Akiba Made War. Mm-hmm. The outro on this fucking show. So this show is essentially. I, a I had drama. a tough time not putting that one on. It's man. really good. I I couldn't not, man. Cause like it's very chill. There's not a ton to it, but like. It's essentially the show is a Yaka Yaka's a drama, but with maids. Thus, the ending theme is this mournful ballad that you might find in a more serious show like that. Uh, our vocalist is singing of about her <laughs> beloved establishment, and then. <coughs> Uh, threatening the listener if they disrespect her, but then wonders if there's any humanity left after all the atrocities she's seen. The brass is blaring. There's there's so much like good shit here. It's all very dramatic, but it still cuts a joke or two when you see like one of the maids standing there, like 
ready for battle holding two guns, but she's not holding two guns. She's holding two glow sticks. Cute. Yeah. It's really rad. I love it. It was it was like one of the few outros this this season that I never skipped. I was always yeah. watching that one. That show it's like kind of like what I said about the intro on it. Like yeah. it's like tailor made like you know, of course all these are, you know, made for right. their shows, but these are like specifically like they are a they are a unit. They are in one 100% yeah, with their Yeah, it's the shows. kind of thing that sometimes idol animes do where yeah. like they'll have the idol girl singing yeah. it. But like this one was, I don't know, it just hits different. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so that's my number three. What do you got? I have um, I have Mob Psycho uh, 103 mm-hmm. Cobalt by Mob Choir. Good stuff. Um, the visual aspect of it is fucking awesome. It's beautiful. It's just yeah. like a whole like the it's like a sketch changing mm-hmm. and growing and uh, different mediums used in and out. Um, it is it is freaking awesome. Yeah, and the song is really good too. Um, it really took me these these last three were very hard to choose between. Mm-hmm. So really, any one of these could be number one, uh, but the way that it shook out shook out, I have that one at my number three. Because I think I, well, I mean, I definitely jammed one of them a lot more. And then the uh, last one, we'll see how it shakes out. Mm, interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're up to numero dos. Uh, mm-hmm. Your boy's up next. And this is the one I'm cheating on. Okay. Uh, because my number two uh, OP of the year, or sorry, ED ending of the year. It's just everything from Chainsaw Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so the thing is, every episode has a different outro, and there are all these perfect little music videos recapping what the episode was. The only reason I can't put them all as number one is because they're all one-offs. So, like, yeah. I can't tell you how any of those songs go. Yeah. I really can't. I don't remember. We, I remember loving the visuals. Yeah. I remember enjoying them. Uh, seven and Eight are my favorite. Seven's the one that's kind of like a little video game dating sim on this uh like uh crt with the like very 80s graphics that is absolutely my mm-hmm. fucking aesthetic and then uh eight was the one with uh tk from Lin Sing Zero. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah 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 so i will just jump to my number one real quick oh okay uh which i, I will we'll come back around to we'll number come back two around but my number one was also the chainsaw man all <laughs> all endings uh but i did write um, all mainly Ling, uh, Ling Tosite Sigre, uh, Ling Tosite Sigre, and the honk one. What the I label as the honk one. The one which with the puke. honk is the is re- referring to puke. That was also episode seven. Yeah, seven, yeah. seven and eight. Yeah, are definitely the, my those favorites. are those, those are, are fucking favorites, next yeah. level. Uh, definitely the honk one is my favorite one. But well, then I have a question, and I think I think I'm on here. Yeah. What in fact was your number two? My number two was the ending for Call of Night. It's uh. Yo Fukushi no Uta by Creepy Nuts. Creepy Nuts. That that title does mean Call of the Night, and I know that because it's my number one. Yeah. So we kind of trade it off there. Yeah, there but, we go. Yeah, the song whips ass. Dude. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I put a song on my anime playlist so fucking quickly. Mm-hmm. Like, I was, as soon as I saw that the first time, I was like, it's in. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's good whenever, like, two of my coworkers, one of them being the old dude named Carter, like, who is this? <laughs> uh, but he, Olivia also, she's like, I love this song. Dude, it's so fucking yeah. good. I get so excited every time it comes on. It's fucking perfect. And it's, it, it's not too often because, you know, they take these songs, they cut them to make them nine, work in 90 seconds for the intros and outros. It's not terribly often you get one that the full song is that much better yeah. than the regular ver- than the than the actual anime version because you know they're cutting it to the good parts but mm-hmm. this one it's fucking better man the the fucking chorus lasts a little bit longer uh, on the on the real version it's so fucking good uh but yeah it's rad as hell it's got the you know pretty cool visuals of a uh, Nazana fucking stalking this giant city biting a lemon like it's the dude's neck shit like that it's a little fan service she, she drops it low at yeah. one point and I'm like alright you ain't got enough ass for that but uh but it's, you gotta do it you know you gotta do it but yeah it's it's just her partying and shit yeah. uh, all by herself dancing on my own as uh, Robin would say and it's just fucking rad. It's my number one. It's yep. your number two. Yep. My we kind of we traded off yep. ones and two, so we were we were very different. Other than that, but yeah, it's good shit, man. 
Do you have any, uh, before we move on to the next thing, do you have any honorable mentions for any outros or intros? Um, hmm. Mm. I really, you mentioned Demon Slayer for the outros. Yeah. I really like the intro on the Demon Slayer season. Yeah, yeah, it's good too. It was really It just good. couldn't cut into the, that, 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 the, the top OPs there were fucking stacked, man. Oh yeah, there's a ton that of good, shit was good intros for this season. Um, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't think of it, of too much that I want. Obviously, I mean, you, you had one of those spy family intros on there. Yeah. yeah. Um, those are fucking great. They're both really good. Yeah. Um, Hmm. What else did I, I, I know there was a ton that I like. I would give a quick shout out to uh, the uh, attack on Titan intro oh, and yeah. outro for final. Yeah. 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 Yep. That fucking shit. I'll give a quick shout out to, um, birdie wing, uh, intro. Venus line. It is not penis slime. Mm, penis slime. It is not what it says. It's Venus line. Uh, Bochi the Rock intro and outro, both very good. Do It Yourself had a super cute intro and outro. I will also say, this is one I only watched one episode of, but I did look up the uh, OP for it because I saw people saying it's really good. And it is really good. Uh, the intro for Urusei Yatsura, uh, the, you know, re redo of mm-hmm. the old ass fucking Yeah, the lady in the, the cheetah bra. Yeah, yeah. Uh, super decent intro. Super fucking decent. Uh, Liger's Recoil also had a pretty good one. There's a ton. Yeah. A lot oh. of people talked about the Bleach uh, yeah. intro, too. Yeah, Bleach intro is pretty sick. I will give one more shout-out on outros to the first outro uh, for Couple of Cuckoos, which there's not a ton to it. It's just kind of pictures of the girls. It's all black and white except for their clothes are, like, neon blue or whatever. But, like, the fucking music rips. It's like this riff like, like that kind of shit. It fucking, it, it's sick. Yeah. It's really good. It was hard to cut that one, but, yeah. List is the yep. list, baby. Yep. And with that, shall we move on? Shall we do our last top five? Robin? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Let's do the top five anime of the year, and then we'll Before get we to hit our those fun categories. categories. Yeah. Now listen, I want to preface this by saying, y'all, it was really fucking hard for me to narrow it down to five, uh, and I'm still, I still am not sure about the order that I have them in. I prop. I've changed this so many fucking times over the past week trying to put this together. It changed today. <laughs> it changed today while I was looking at it at work on a break. I was like, ah, maybe that one should be number four. Maybe I should put this one on. The like, this one was fucking tough. So, I'm just, I'm just prefacing this by saying, I'm not a hundred percent on the order, but this is the order they're going in the yeah. record books as. Yep. So, I think this is going to be pretty fun, dude. What do you got for number five? Number five, I put my dress up, darling. Hell yeah, you did. Yep. <laughs> Um, you did not finish that one. You no. did not make it. God. I did not make it past Smooth, Silky Smooth. Silky Smooth seems like ages ago, but it does. And yet, um, and yet, I'll never forget it, and I'll never forget. I it. I fucking love that show, and it was it was really cute. It was saw, it was yeah. honestly a great uh, exploration into young love and sexuality, and that's great. Um, and and also somebody being really passionate about you mm-hmm. know about creating, yeah, and then somebody being really passionate about cosplay. Um, you know, and a character that didn't necessarily, you know, the, that, you know, the most popular character, whatever, not really caring about what her friends thought if whether or not it was cool to like yeah, man. cosplay and anime and stuff. And that always really resonates with me, the characters yeah. like that, because, um, I, I definitely went, you know, came up in a time where it, you know, maybe I was kind of on the last waves there of breaking through the wall of where anime actually is cool from the point that it wasn't very cool, you know? Yeah, man. Um, so yeah, it, it's awesome to see. I, I, I love that show. I, I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, it, it, it had to, to crush into my, my five somehow, and it only made it to five, but, um, that only shows you how, how great the rest of these fucking shows are. Yeah, you're right. Cause it's- these are, these are all great shows. That show is cute. It's a little too fan servicey for me, but I do see. You know, the I don't appeal. give a shit about that. I know you don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you loved it when he was wiping up that girl's sweat. Yeah, come on, man. Oh, it's like, oh my god, she's silky smooth. <laughs> no, worst. I admittedly that part was a little strange. That's, but that, was, that was one was one. too much. It was just too much one. for me. Okay, but hey, I, I'm hey, not saying happens. I'm not saying that you, you you shouldn't have went on if you weren't comfortable. That's fine. Uh, well, for my number five, I went with one that we've already mentioned a few times. And speaking of, you know. A little bit of fan service. And it has a teensy bit. Uh, but I went with my number five, 
Call of the Night. Mm -hmm. It is a semi sleazy tale of a young dude who drops out of school to wander the streets at night. Little fan service. Little fan service. For once, finding some freedom. He, of course, almost instantly meets a vampire girl and decides he wants to become a vampire too. It's dark, it's goofy, occasional fan service, great music, and really decent animation. This one's a fucking banger. The only real downside there is, again, and we talked about it previously when we talked about it, but like, it's, you know, this kid. He is a kid. He's like 15, I think. Yeah. And everyone else around him is, you know, presumed to be for sure adults. Uh, even the girl, she looks young, but like she's going out and buying beers and drinking. So she's got to be at least old enough to drink and shit. So it's like a little weird there. But like, again, the whole thing is that like they he it's this whole thing where like she has this arrested development thing where like she can't she doesn't think of anything romantically. So she doesn't even see it that way i don't know but yeah i'm not gonna try to make excuses okay. for that aspect it's a thing that happens it's anime yeah. it happens but i really did like the show it's a beautiful show it's really pretty mm-hmm. it's uh, god it's a fucking dream to look at oh yeah those fucking star scenes man mm-hmm. those galaxies Skies, up back. Yeah. oh baby what do you got for number four big guy uh my number four i'm gonna say it like you want me to say it baby Give spy it to x me. family you sack of shit <laughs> you son of a bitch <laughs> all right um, easily, easily, I don't know, pound for pound, probably the breakout show of the year. Yeah. Um, we said I several mean, times the easiest one to recommend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's one other obvious huge breakout show this year, yeah, yeah, but, for sure. um, this one, you know, is easy to recommend to, even though it does have like some gunplay and some violence in there, mm-hmm. it's easy, you know, like I can sleep comfortably knowing that, m- you know, my, uh, my ex sister in law messaged me asking if it was safe for my niece to watch, and I said yes. Yes, hell yes. Yeah. In fact, put it on now. Yeah. Um, it's such a it's such a cute, heartwarming show. It's really good. Um, it's one of those shows I was able to sit down with my wife. We still have a couple of episodes to go on it, uh, but I know it's not gonna tank from you know from down there it's the only show that i put on here that i have not fully completed yeah and that's because i've just been keep, keeping up with my wife it's really good um but yeah it's it's an amazing show the care the characters are amazing anya is great mm-hmm. it's got the stupidest faces of the year yeah um yeah it's just that shit is it's my shit dude yeah. I, I love spy family it's really fucking i good. will stand for it until the day i die very good it's man. good <laughs> Uh, for me, my number four is one that came out this past season, and that is, <coughs> we've already talked about it a bit, baby, it's back, Akiba Made War. It is a bullet-riddled, cutthroat Yakuza story set in 1999, Akihabara, where a young newbie joins up with a low-level gang that quickly becomes a thorn inside of the higher-ups, except the twist, of course, is that they aren't Yakuza gangsters. They're a bunch of cutesy maid workers with frilly dresses, and it's so fucking good it's so goofy it's so dumb it's so fucking funny just constantly um it is a bit violent that's the main thing i said before you know the first thing i compared it to was metalocalypse i for me yeah. I, honestly i, I kind of like you know wasn't a huge fan of metalocalypse but this show's fucking amazing mm. uh and it's really really fun and i you mm, oh it's good yeah it's just good it's just really good what do you got for number three, big boy? Uh, my number three is that other breakout show, dude. It is Chainsaw Man. Hot damn. Uh, the show whips ass. It does. It's it's crazy to look at. Uh, the characters are nuts as fuck. It, it is surprisingly deep. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a lot of uh, topics, especially like with abuse and stuff, explored yeah. in this show. A ton. Um, but the characters are all, for the most part, pretty likable. Mm-hmm. They're intriguing. Uh, the premise is is wild and intriguing as well. Uh, it is just a good ass show. Like if if people we we got a question from our good buddy Josh asking you know about he had he had watched it by the time we answered mm-hmm. it, but asking if the hype was real on the show and the hype in fact is real. Yeah, this show is is incredible, and everybody should be you know watching it, assuming that you can handle that level of violence, and you know it's age appropriate. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't be throwing this one out to my niece comfortably. No, I'd be like, you need to be at least fifteen. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> but um, the show is the the show is nuts, dude, and it pres- it provides for some of the craziest moments in anime that I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. 
it's wild as fuck. Yep. It's wet and wild. Yep. And that's why it's also my number three. I nice. was sh- I'm shocked you didn't have it higher. I thought we were gonna okay. have a fight about this one. Yeah. But uh yeah, Chainsaw Man is also my number three. Incredibly hyped, rightly so. Um I mean, it's basically like if you had Devil Man crybaby but instead of the main guy being a sweet little cinnamon roll who gets incredible powers he's a horny idiot who's never been properly integrated into society mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. and then you throw in like a goofy uh devil like yeah whatever the fuck friend, power is right yeah. you got you got a sasuke in there there's a sasuke a in here selfish kind of lovable idiot yeah you got a straight up sasuke with an extra tragic backstory yeah. uh homies being used but to what end like yeah. clearly and like a l- nice little mystery there and then like some truly outrageous fucking twists and and turns yeah yeah holy shit you mix that all up baby you got a stew going chainsaw mm-hmm. man whips ass yeah uh and with that let's move on to i'm i'm honestly pretty hyped here so i think i have a guess for what probably your number one for mm-hmm. sure for sure your top yeah. two is gonna be uh, so why don't you tell me what your number two is? My number two. Here we go. And the reason, okay, so I really had to put a lot of thought of this, and eventually I just kind of like, well, this one technically started in 2021. Okay. So, so I'm going to put it at number two. Okay. Uh, it is Ranking of Kings. Ranking of Kings is so good. <laughs> which, you know, that was your one last year. It hadn't finished. It did finish this year. It was It was my, I think I had it put at number four because it hadn't finished yet. And I would, I would revise that and say it probably should. Yeah. I'll put it at number two just because. Yeah number one was i have not stopped singing the show's praises all year long so i get on to i talk about olivia i get on to her every time that that uh opening comes on on the playlist i'm on her ass but like how how have you not finished this show yet so fucking she got like episode 13 and then they started watching some live action what is going on here i thought you were a good buddy god damn it uh but i mean i do tell everybody like you know now it's it's easy like right at the top of my recommendations yeah you need to watch ranking king absolutely glorious um especially if i know like they're a, they're a fan of game of thrones or anything like that like yeah that kind of ranking kings hits so many levels yeah um the only the only thing it really doesn't do is that like those shows uh kind of like chainsaw man you don't know who's safe yeah you Whereas really this don't one, this one uh, ranking of kings as much as i love it it really wants everyone to have a happy ending yeah that's the only thing it it, it doesn't feel like anybody's safe but they do bring people back a lot it's like a marvel comic book yeah a little bit marvel dc all the comics i don't know like, how many times they have yeah, he's break, dead i don't he's know how, they, how many times they had to break my head uh my heart with that snake you know oh baby yeah but <laughs> it's my number two what you got uh, baby Maybe I should move it to number one just for Hilling. Hilling was perfect. I love Hilling. God, yeah, Muscle good, Mommy. What a, what a fucking good show. Yeah. Fucking he- Muscle Healer Mommy. Uh, my number two. Um, God, I really love this show. And it was also from this past season. And it's so goofy. And maybe it is recency bias. But baby, I got to give it to Bochi the Rock. You haven't watched an episode of this, but it's so fucking good, dude. Okay. We've seen Anxious Girl Tries to Make Friends animes. We've seen Girls in Bands animes. But this show fuses those two concepts and makes them so fucking fun. It's got jokes on jokes. It's got really good references and stuff. The music is rad. I will admit, and this is the thing I know you won't like, is that it sometimes takes a backseat to the actual story. Until episode 12, where mm-hmm. they have a big performance and they, you know, re- they let it ride. Baby. It doesn't it bother ride. me that bad if they don't set the precedent. It's just that like there's like they'll they'll start playing. It's like oh this sounds pretty cool, cool, and then like as they're playing, it'll like you'll see homegirl and it's like blah 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 inner monologue about what's oh, going yeah. on. It's like all right, like let it let it fucking ride. They let it ride in the final yeah, episode. Good. It sounds so fucking good. Uh, but yeah, man. It overall, it's I think the most fun I've had watching a show all year. Um, it is, it is really fucking great. Bochi the rock. And I I actually, I did see this and I was like, whoa, for real. Like I didn't realize it had as big a following as it does. Uh, there's a thing where like, I think it was on my anime list or something. People were like freaking out like a few days ago because holy shit, it actually got like, it was, it was neck and neck all season and Bochi the rock got like a point up in the rankings over chainsaw man. And I was like, yo, (laughs) I was like, damn, dude. But yeah, they're, uh, these are all really great shows. They don't have to fight. They can all be friends. And Boji mm-hmm. the Rock's very, very good. Uh, what, sir, 
what sir do you have and i think i know yeah but what sir is your numero well you know every year and you had brought this up before I always do an additional, like a, a sequel season as opposed to something brand new. But shit. you know, baby. And of course, I never do you, sequel seasons you, on my top you five. You know it's the one and only one, dude. It's gotta be. It's, it's so It's good. Mob Psycho 103. Uh, it's so good. It's so fucking good. It's a perfect cap to a perfect show. Yeah. Tens all the way across beautiful. the board. Did you finish yeah. it? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you? Did you? Hey, we confirmed something that we talked about last uh, episode with our boy and the aliens. Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. pops up with a... Yeah, I got those goofy ass eyes. Oh yeah. god. Um man, I loved it, dude. It's and I'm so sad good. that it's over. I hope they, you know you know, they'll be like, you know what, maybe a little money is okay. And we do Oh, it. you know it's gonna get and a we, fucking Netflix live action remake. Piss I don't me I off. don't want that, dude. I want <laughs> I want, you know, maybe maybe just just a movie, you know, just a just a theatrical movie. Hey man, let let's let let's let those one punches can get a movie, I think. Let's well, let I our man. Let's movie. let our man one summer fucking let him let him fucking move on to his next project because you know it's gonna be some hot fire. Let us just give you your money, dude. Calm let, down. Let me give you some money. This Calm show is, it, dude. It's so good. Dude. It's it is very. Good. It's, it's you know good. like I. It's hard to not think that it's not my favorite anime of all time. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's just so fucking good. It's perfect. The characters are perfect. <laughs> There's is. nothing I could think. There's nothing bad about the, it. It's just the, really good. The only bad thing about it is trying to figure out which of the opening songs is the best one. You're right. Yeah. It, it's, you know. It's, it's 99.9. It's, it's, it's the one and only one, dude. One and only one. Yep. Yeah, that's my number one, dude. What is your number it's one? It's really fucking good. So, of course, I never put sequel series on my top five of the year. I want to keep it to, like, new stuff. But, um, yeah, that one would be quite highly. I would have a difficult time not putting that one at number one. But my number one anime of the year, uh, we've already mentioned it, of course. It is Spy Family. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've said several times it's the easiest show this se- that sees for whatever season. Excuse and this me, year, do you mean Spy X Family? I did not. You said Spy Family regular uh, during your thing. Calm down. <laughs> we've said it's the easiest to recommend, and that's because, baby, it is simply the best the story of this cobbled together group each member harboring secrets but slowly meshing into a real family the looming threat of a war that mirrors our real life iron curtain and just banger after banger jokes moments you know everything about it it just it doesn't have downtime it don't miss baby it don't fucking miss and i really want you to finish it because there's some crazy shit that happens in the lighter half of this season that's so fucking good Oh. It definitely feels like a show that's going to get a few seasons. Oh, so. yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, f- I feel like there's no way it doesn't. But, yeah, Spy Family, it's just great. It's just fucking great, man. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed it. It is my number one for this year. Uh, and, again, I move these around a lot on my top five, but I feel like it's got to be number one. Yeah, man. it's so good. It's I was, so good. I was starting to worry that it, I was like, God, what is Brandon's number one? You didn't think it's got to be it. Spy Family, right? Yeah, 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 but, yeah. yeah. I didn't know, dude. I didn't know what you 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 know. Maybe you pull out a blue lock. I, I throw know. I throw dance 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 yeah. here up there just to fuck yeah. with you. Nah, that is a good show though. But yeah, uh, rad as hell. Uh, any honorable mentions for anime of the year? Anything else you enjoyed? Um, a couple. Uh, Keep it May War, Call of yeah. Night. Neither one of those I have finished, so you know they they weren't there able to. I actually was hoping that while I was sick, I would have some time to watch anime, but. Nope, too busy sleeping. Uh, yeah, I was too busy sleeping and, you know, trying to focus on getting better. Um, other great things. I mean, oh, the second season of Demon Slayer was also really oh, good. Oh, yeah. Second season of Made Abyss, also really good. Yeah. You know you know, I have no shame on the second season, so. Oh. um, All really good shit. There, dude, there was a lot of great stuff this year. There was. There was yeah. a ton. I'll give a shout out to Birdie Wing. I mentioned it before. Love Birdie Wing. What a goofy ass show. Uh, a Haran song. Oh God, yeah. yeah, that show was really fucking funny. Sabiki Bisco, uh, also really good. Was that this year? That was this year. Oh, damn. Yeah, dude, you got you had to go through the like 2022 in anime on on Wikipedia. I and, thought that shit was out. last nah, year. That was that was this year. That was winter uh, this year. Uh, beginning of the year, obviously, but this year, Dance Dance Dance. You already mentioned Likers Recall Recoil is a really great Girls with Guns series that uh, won the affections of even. Uh, our fucking Metal Gear boy. Uh, uh, why can't I think of his fucking name? God damn it. Metal Gear guy. Snake? No, the dude who makes the game. What Hideo the fuck? Kojima? Kojima, Jesus Christ. My brain is mush. 
Hideo Kojima, he liked that one. Uh, Likers Recoil. Uh, Do It Yourself is probably the best, like, girl hobby show I've ever seen. And it's fucking great. Uh, and, of course, the only reason this didn't make my list is because it's a fucking Gundam series. And it's going to be, like, 50 episodes long. But uh, of course. Gundam Witch from Mercury absolutely fucking killer it's so good i am gonna reserve the right to put that on a best of the year list uh later uh but yeah which for mercury is really fucking good um and with that we shall move on to our categories now the way we usually do this we got some fun ones some fun ones mm -hmm. kind of funny mm -hmm. ones uh where we kind of goof around you know regular stuff best boy best girl goofing uh, this and that, best fight, etc., etc., and then we we're gonna end it with our categories. We will get to those in a moment because that is that is a particularly good buddies thing. No one else is doing the categories quite like us. I don't know. Of. Yeah. So th we're gonna save that one for last. And so let's get to let's get to some fun stuff. So what do you? I'll let you decide what we do first, man. Do you want to start? I want. I think I want to start with one of these. Do you want most pleasant surprise or most disappointing first? Um. Do you want to start it on a low note and then move up? Uh, you know what, dude? Just just direct this. You direct this. Okay. I I, I feel like I've got some pretty interesting picks for I everything. Th I think so. let's start with most yeah. disappointing. So this is the uh, Good Buddies, um, somebody shit in the cake uh -huh. award for most disappointing. You thought yep. it was gonna be cool, and then it ended up fucking sucking. So what is your most disappointing moment of the year, sir? I put the odd taxi movie in the woods. Yeah. Yep. I get that. I get that. I was very disappointed, dude. It had a little you, bit of you new got stuff, me but in mostly. on a taxi. Yeah, I fucking loved it. I was so stoked whenever they announced that there was a movie coming out that yeah. was going to have some additional stuff towards the end, only for it to be you know like seconds almost. I get of, that of stuff. So like I watched through a wham jam version of Odd Taxi, which was while they did a good job of putting the show out there. It was much better just to watch the entire show itself. If, if you have the time, sir. Yeah. Uh, pretty much any way you cut it, there's no way yeah. it was ever yeah. Be better. Yeah. It, 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 it's, you know, hard to recommend anybody to watch that movie. I would recommend them to watch the show and then get that last 45 seconds of the movie or whatever. Yeah, yeah totally. That lasts like three minutes. Maybe. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. Uh, my yep. most disappointing moment of the year, and I had a few to pick from. I almost went with that Smile of the Arts Notorious show. Uh, I almost went with uh, the fact that they took and uh, they made and used a Sumika song who again has some of the best music and historically some of the best intros that was Bodakoi, that was Pretty Boy Detective Club and they used them for the outro on a couple of cuckoos or the intro intro on a couple of cuckoos and that animation fucking sucked it was a waste I almost went with Silky Smooth but you know what I did oh, go yeah. with my, my most disappointing of the year and I'm getting a little hooey wooey with it but my most disappointing thing this year was goddamn Disney not putting up the uh, fucking animes they just... licensed? You sacks of shit, get it together, man. Yeah, I have our uh, I have our um, episodes for the past year pulled up here, Ugh. and I just saw like Summertime Rendering on there, which is a show that I still want to watch. But like, you know fuck what? Me, right? I'm not watching that shit on Disney Plus. I canceled that shit after waiting two seasons for anime to pop up. <sighs> and like, and I'm you, not you, downloading that it's shit It's so again. annoying, too, because if you Google, like, where can I watch Summertime Render? It's like, watch it on Disney. Yeah, Disney Here's Plus. Disney app. Go ahead and sign up. Go ahead and join. Is and it like, on Disney Plus? I yet? have it. I have it. I, I'm looking at it, and I know it's not there. Why are you telling me to sign up for Disney Plus? So you Plus still can't even watch Summertime Rendering, which looks like an amazing fucking <sighs> show, and by all accounts, it is. I'll take Black Rock Shooter at this point. Just give me something, yeah. you fucking rat. Little, little Mickey, something. you bitch. Fuck you, Mickey. Yeah, you do, uh, bitch, Mickey. I'll also give a second place award to High Dive in general. Uh, using the app on the phone and casting it is not great. Please fix mm -hmm. your mobile app at the casting. I hear it's great on, like, uh, Xbox, but you know what? That app ain't on the fucking PlayStation, so get it together, High Dive. Uh, but, yeah, get Disney, it fucking it. bummer. Most pleasant surprise. You tripped. You fell in the mud. You ruined your beautiful fucking misfits shirt the cat got you for christmas but as you were standing up what is that oh it's a beautiful gold necklace mm -hmm. you found a mm -hmm. 24 care a big thick chain you can take that and yeah either wear to get you a little bit of money for it. buy you all the misfits shirt you want so what is your most pleasant surprise my, my pleasant surprise was ended up being um 
It ended up being, I, I put my dress up, darling. Okay. Because I did, <laughs> I really did not expect that show. You didn't have to, high hopes for it. I didn't, you know, I had kind of like, uh, just, you know, like, oh, I'll probably like this show. Mm. I did not expect to love that show as much as I did. And clearly it made my top anime. I really, really, really enjoyed my dress up, darling. Um, and, you know, even with a hiccup like Silky Smooth in it, mm. um, it, the show just fucking ruled for me, man. It, it set with me well. I, I love it, dude. And I can't wait for more of it to come out. It's good stuff. So, yeah, that was, you know, it wasn't really, you know, the, the colorful fall in the mud or whatever. I already expected that I would probably be okay with it. At least I'd be like, huh, some fan service of Watch 3 and I'm not going to watch anymore. <laughs> uh, I got to see know, some all these, all these you damn kids. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Um, but, man, I really ended up loving that show a whole I lot. I know you did. Yep. So, that's it. That, and my dress-up darling is my most pleasant surprise of the year. Uh, my most pleasant surprise of the year. Uh, you know what I fucking hate is... And, and and unfortunately, my dress up darling is a great example of this. This thing where they give you a character that they say this character is the same age or older than the other characters you're seeing, but they draw them like a fucking child. Uh, that is what the Silky Smooth oh, scene ended yeah. up being. I fucking hate that shit. I hate it. And when I saw the fucking shit for this Aharon San show, mm -hmm. I was like, this is going to be some fucking garbage. And you know what? I was shamed by my words and deeds. A Haran San uh, Wa Hakarenai, I believe I'm saying that right. I'm probably saying it yeah. wrong. That show is so fucking good. It it's is. It's so goddamn funny. It's so fucking cute. Everything about it, it's just a couple of real fucking morons mm. just bouncing off of each other. Oh, yeah. It's so fucking good. Yeah. I, I was really surprised by how much I ended up enjoying that one. And I really hope they make more of that one, too, because mm -hmm. it's, it's so fucking What cute. a pleasant it's surprise so it was. It was a really pleasant surprise. I was just like, this is nice. Yeah. It ended up being the thing I wanted to watch most of that That show season. ended up getting me, uh, my wife, making me a bento every day. Yeah. <laughs> now she, ma she makes me a bento. I got my little bento box you in there. Little she, bento box. she sends me a lunch with a, <laughs> to work with my little bento lunch every day Aww, now. Yep. With your little veggies and your rice. Yeah, man. There's just some cra carrots and ranch in there. <laughs> Uh, today good. there was some pizza in there. It was Ooh, pretty good. Yeah, nice little cheesy. Yeah, man, delicious. Uh, yeah, Aharon Sanwa Hakar and I, super cute, super fucking cute. I loved it. And with that, let us move on to let's keep up with the uh, downer into upper pattern. Okay, uh, Roger, I would like to know what for you, and this can be a show or a moment or anything. Okay, what was the saddest thing? The Good Buddy Brandon's Crybaby Corner Award yeah. for the saddest thing for you this year. Now, to be clear, on here I did pick shows and I did pick some specific moments Very for good. some of these categories. Yeah, but this one uh, shakes out to being a show. Um, I watched a show that came out early this year. Katara lives alone. Holy shit. My God, that show is fucking crippling sad. So I didn't finish it. Haley did. She told me, yes, it's incredibly sad. Yeah. Just just everything. And, like, people realizing how terrible, like, this kid has fucking been treated. Yeah. And his, like, his will to be, try to be way more adult than he actually is. Mm -hmm. So people respect him and he has friends. And also, so nobody will abandon him again. Yeah. When Haley explained to me why he buys these specific tissues yep i was like what in the fuck yep. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> it's, yep. yeah that's a bummer yeah uh, dude it's it is the saddest shit that i watched all year oh buddy and it's like the episodes always start the show is great for for the way they do this shit yeah it starts out and it's upbeat and it's it's pretty funny and you know there's some laughable moments and then it just jerks that shit shit right back from you and then it spits Ugh. some cold hard facts in your face fuck me um it, it it's it's like it's that it's that classic rug pull of where you're having a great meal yeah and then people remind you that there are third world car, uh, countries where there are children starving out yeah. there <laughs> That's Fuck what me, this dude. show is, dude. That sucks. <laughs> All right. That's what this show is. Uh, and it, it wasn't. It, it was never too much. It wasn't. Didn't just full on whiplash you. It still worked. It still worked. It okay. still was a great show. I'd watch another season of it. All right. All right. Good. Because I loved watching it. Like like whenever things did work out for him, and 
whenever people figured out what was going on with him, you know, like the people that gathered around and the little bonds that he formed and stuff. Very good. Is it's it, there there is true like good human heartwarming, right. you know, times there. Yep, yeah, it's a good show. Very good. Uh for my status, I went with a I had a few different moments I went with. There wasn't a show. There was not a um, you know, two year eternity this season that really got me in the feels. Uh, although there is a season two of two year eternity, it's just <laughs> kind of different. Um, but yeah, the I had a few different moments I almost went with, and I'm gonna get a little spoilery here. So, uh, first of all, I'll say Ascendance of a Bookworm. There's a bit where the main character is forced to cut ties with her family, very heartbreaking. Um, Sabiki Bisco, you never finished that one. I don't think you're gonna, quite frankly. I want to though. You, it is in my queue. Can I spoil something? No. no? Okay, no, I won't okay. spoil it. There is a major character death. Okay. Well, as long as it's not Octagawa, dude. I'm not going to say it. There's a major character death, uh, and another major character is responsible for it. I'll tell you that much. Mm. Uh, it's pretty hit. It's pretty heavy. But the saddest thing for me, uh, and it wasn't even like I didn't even cry. It was just, this just hurt my soul to watch it happen for a number of reasons. Uh, but go ahead and skip ahead maybe a minute and a half if you don't want to hear about a major point in uh, Dance, Dance, Dance Here. Uh, I'm just going to read this out real quick because I wrote it. I typed it up to make sure I didn't miss anything. So basically, it's the moment where our one of our secondary main characters, the main character's rival even, who becomes a begrudging friend, the Vegeta of this show, if yeah. you will, of this fucking ballerina dance show. Uh, <laughs> his name is Luo, and it's the scene where he confronts his grandmother. So basically... This dude was raised by his former ballerina star grandma after his mother, who who grandma always said could have been a perf amazing ballerina. Well, she had a kid and fucked off to America to become an actress. And she leaves the kid with her mother. Luo is staying with his grandma and his grandmother is a fucking monster. Uh, she more or less tortures this boy into being a perfect dancer making him do all this stuff you know stretching out this and that like really forcing this upon this kid that he doesn't even necessarily want and yet years later in the season finale he has a moment where he confronts her uh he fucks off to the old folks home and she's on the beach sitting in her little chair and she's just clapping and laughing because at this point she's gone a little bit wonky and she just keeps calling him by his mother's name mizuru he says oh she keeps going, oh, well done, Mizuto. You're so good. You're so good while he's dancing because he's trying to, like, prove that he managed to do this despite her. So the other two characters show up. They decide to try and help him. They perform a scene from, Son a scene from Swan Lake, which they fucking nail. He fucking nails it. He, quote, takes this, quote, body she made with her training, and he dances his own way instead of hers. He even takes her shawl off of her that she's wrapped up with and prances around in it using it as his wings as he's playing this one character from swan lake and it's like fucking heavy the symbol of her overbearing methods and personality that's his wings he's using her own all of his pain to take flight and fucking nail it and when he's done he falls to his knees he looks up she's been sitting there just kind of smiling this whole time she's on her fucking feet she's staring him in the eye there's no smile on her face. She's looking straight at him. This moment, and he's like, yeah, you have to fucking acknowledge me like the goddamn tribal chief. You have to acknowledge me. You have to say it. You have to say that I'm the best. And she looks at him and she goes, well done, Mizuru. You're so good. Because she's just a senile old woman. That monster's gone, man. Mm -hmm. What the fuck are you even doing this for? Yeah. And this boy just shatters. I mean, it's... It's so, oh, it's that good drama, baby. Yeah. He just fucking falls apart and everyone's just screaming and crying and trying to keep him from losing his mind. It's so fucking good, dude. That's a really, really good show. Dance 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 here kicks ass. Uh, and if uh, you got through that spoiler and uh, didn't and still want to watch it, please, please watch it. It's really fucking good. Uh, but that was my saddest moment. And Roger, with that, I have a question for you that uh, burns within my very soul. Yeah, man. What's your funniest? What's the thing that made you laugh the most, bud? My funniest, the funniest anime that I watched all year. All right, here we go. Uh, I put a horn song down. Same. That shit is fucking it's so, so fucking laugh funny. out loud fucking funny. <laughs> Every, the whole everything. stupid ass show. Everything about it, dude. Yeah. It's so dumb and 
It's that it's that perfect kind of humor that I like, dude. It's absolutely yeah. absurd. Just like these two are fucking idiots, and real it morons. is wonderful. Real morons yeah. who just completely don't understand each other and keep thinking like one literally because she barely talks at all. The other, because, yeah, just just the initial like little joke of her yeah. talking so quietly is fucking hilarious yeah. in itself. When they when they keep trying to fucking figure out a way yeah. to do it, like she's tossing him notes, like he's. He's like sitting in class, note bounces off him, sitting at lunch, note bounces off him, taking a piss, note bounces off, like, whoa, okay. And that shit just goes on <laughs> throughout the whole fucking happening. show, yeah. It's so good. It's it's so f- it's, it's a good ass show, dude. It's it's hilarious. That I love that show. So. I did have a uh, Spy Family, Bochi the Rock, and Kaguya Sama Ultra Romantic yeah. down All as fun. some runners up, but yeah, it's a Haran song. Yeah. It's just so fucking funny. Mm-hmm. Yep. Alright, man, which one's next? Uh, next up, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's get uh, another another one out of the way. What's the most shocking? Uh, I, I think it has to be a moment yeah. for an anime, and I think I know. I I, I think I know. Actually, you know, uh, maybe a, I don't. A couple of things come to mind. I've got uh, a few here. Yeah. So I wrote down one word, or sorry, two words in all caps. Mm-hmm. Gun violence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What, whether it be from the first episode, the shock into a keep a made war yeah, that you get, absolutely, or that eighth episode or so of Chainsaw Man. Holy shit, y'all! Gun violence. Chainsaw Man's a fucking trip. Yeah, that um, shit. That shit was shocking, dude. Obviously, we don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't uh, gotten yeah. that far into Chainsaw Man. But I will say uh, two words of my own: Red Wedding. But uh, mm. otherwise, yeah, a lot of a lot of crazy yeah. shit. Going Either on. that or or Ma's low hanging ass. Holy uh, <laughs> fucking Ma's ass! Um, <laughs> I had a few to go with here. Um, I had episode six of Witch from Mercury. Uh, <coughs> the ending of it is really fucking jarring because it's like almost out of nowhere. Uh, and if anyone's seen that episode, you'll know what I mean when I say happy birthday. Um, I also had. Uh, a certain moment from Chainsaw Man. I also had, and this did not make it, but uh, I had a Kibi Sailor uniform because realizing it's a foot show was a mm-hmm. real fucking jump. Yeah, but what I went with was the first episode of The Executioner and Her Way of Life. That is my most shocking thing. And I'm just going to spoil this one because you're never going to watch it. Yeah. So skip ahead a little bit if you don't want to see this one. I already, You already know, like I told you, it's a story of it's, you know, fucking Isekai's are real. Uh, this dude gets isekai the king's like oh yes uh, what powers he have they check what powers he got they kicked him out you find out this is a thing that happens all the time people are brought in they all have crazy powers and blah 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 and it's like not even all that crazy so the dude uh, is wandering around now this dude he's just like you know typical anime pro tag whatever he's kind of boring he's kind of a dipshit but um, they said his power was nothing and he's like what the fuck does that mean so he runs into this girl who's from the church and she's like oh well it's, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for taking care of you guys so she's like taking him around showing him stuff he's like well maybe I can like invent something from the real world like dude this happens all the time check it out like we got everything from your world it's cool like people have already made it all we get it yeah you're different uh and he's like what the fuck do i do he's like well so what we need to do is find out what your power actually is so she takes him to this little chapel and they're at the chapel she's like all right so what you want to do is just focus just just focus on this thing your power is going to come just focus on the thing and we're going to find out what it is and he focuses up and he's pointing at this fucking altar in the church and this power zooms around him and hits that thing and just disappears his power isn't nothing his power is to fully make nothing mm. he can he can destroy anything and he's standing there and he's like well, that's that's not a bad power at all this is amazing i could i could probably fuck some shit up i could probably rule this world stabbed in the fucking head yeah she takes him out immediately she's the execution because that's her fucking yeah. job baby she's here to take care of you yeah See, the thing is that these people get isekai'd all the fucking time, and they're all crazy powerful, and if you just let them run around, baby, they're going to destroy the whole world. It's already happened several times. Mm -hmm. There's been these great disasters that have already destroyed huge parts of the world. Can't be letting that happen. Yeah. And, like, this is where I I throw in my little callback to when I was... uh, doing this in the tier list when i said it takes all this show's great because it takes all those boring same old isekai tropes and just stabs them right in the head 
<laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, Executioner and Way of Life kicks ass. Uh, that show did not make my top fives, but it's good. The ending was a little mm, freaky deaky, but I really did enjoy it, and uh, I would I would continue to watch more if it comes. But yeah, that was uh, quite a shocker of a first episode, and I really enjoyed it. With that, uh, let's go ahead and go with best fight. Best fight. We throwing down. Mm-hmm. What do you got for me, Roger? What's your best fight of the year? I there's, wrote. There's some really good. There ones were to pick some from. really good ones. Some real hot fire. But I wrote down uh, Faputa versus the world. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. That's uh. Her what? whole fight sequence there, where you know whether it's it's from the town. Yeah. It's from the the protectors of the town, the town's people. Reg at one point. I mean, it's a sprawling, like, three-episode-long fight. Um, and god damn, that shit whips ass. It is so exhilarating. It's nuts, dude. I, I couldn't wait for the next episodes to be out to see what happened next, especially the one where her and Reg fight or whatever. And yeah, that she, one was nuts. She counters him right in the end, right in the end and pins his ass down. Um, damn, dude. It, it was between that fight and... Or the uh, the last fight in Demon Slayer season two, the, uh, also the very good. entertainment district fight with the brother and sister. There's a lot of good um, ones. because there's a whole lot happening in those sequences, um, and it was really hard to call between those two. But yeah, man, I I feel like it. it I I love the the that was my favorite part of the Maiden Abyss second season. It was really good. So yeah, I have Fubuta versus the world. Good stuff. Uh, for my best fight, there was a lot to pick one. Um, I had Tanjiro and Uzui versus Gitaro. I have uh, Yuta versus Ghetto from the fucking uh, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget oh, that yeah, came out. Good ass fight. Well, technically, it came out last year, but was in America this year. Uh, it was only December last year in Japan, so whatever, I'm counting it. Uh, I also have God Dimple versus Psycho Helmet. Yeah, fucking dude. Killer. That one. That one actually crossed my mind too. Yeah. Uh, but for me, just because it is the full culmination of the story and it is the climax, and it was very well done. It's short, but it's very well done. I went with Boji versus Bose from oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Ranking yeah. of Kings. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's fucking fluid, dude. It's good. Fucking dude. rad as hell, dude. Absolutely killer. This, this giant. So, first of all, it's like this giant's mind and soul or whatever in the body of his brother, who is, you know. A kid, so he's not crazy much taller than him, but the way they animate it where they show you like the strength of him by showing him as the actual giant that he is swinging this huge fucking club and Boji just like pinging it away, dodging and dipping and, and taking him out. Man, fucking killer fights. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have a couple of fun ones here Eve, Eve versus Rose from uh, Birdie Wing. Uh, I also have two that, and I gotta show you this fucking clip. Because there was two this year, twice this happened, you know. We get the cool fights, we get the super cool, like, shing shings with the swords and everything, the super fast motions and all the, like, real production of it. But there were two different animes that had just very sincere, I dare say realistic, just punching brawls in them. And they were all girls. It was Hiori versus Chizuru in Heroines Won the Show. And a girl named Choo Choo versus some fucking bully bitches in Witch for Mercury. Uh, where these girls are just fucking with them. Homegirl's just like, I've had enough. She walks up. What the hell are you doing? Just straight sucker <laughs> punches this girl. And she, it's like very realistic. And she just goes, Gah! and just falls over. <laughs> it's it's a hell of a scene. I don't know what else to tell you. But uh, yeah, for me, Boji Bose. Come on. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think, what else we got here? Oh, we got to do these two. So I'll let you pick. Do you want to do best girl or best boy first? Uh, let's do do let's do best girl first. Let's do best girl. Who do you got for best girl? Because I have it written in not that order. Mm. Um, uh, best girl. I have Marin Kitagawa from My Dress Up Darling. Of I love her. Of course you fucking do. I fucking love her. I honestly, I was like, it's. I didn't know who it was gonna be. But, but it was a close with Anya too. Anya's like Anya's so Anya's like the obvious pick, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a little I'm a little dissenter. And honestly, she's she's very good. She's also a little gremlin, so I don't know if I'm calling her yeah. best girl. Certainly most fun. I don't know about best girl. Uh but yeah, I get that. Ranko is also a good choice too. Ranko's very I fucking love Ranko. 
I really thought you might even go with uh, Destiny from Love After World Domination. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I did love her. Yeah, very good. Uh, this one was a toughie for me. Um, the really obvious ones for me were Anya and Bochi from Bochi the Rock, but... <sighs> I gotta be true to my heart, man. Power's also a good choice, too. Power's good. Uh, I think it's gotta be Seraphu from Do It Yourself. Um, she's the main girl from Do It Yourself. She's the one that I described as having that Shonen Pro tag. Oh, your was also a good her. choice, too. A lot, of, really lot good. of There's a lot of good girls yeah. this season. A lot of real this year, this year. A lot of good stuff. But yeah, her fucking name. So the show's called Do It Yourself. Her name is Seraphu. Her family name is Yua. Her name is Yua Selfu. <laughs> Yua what? You are Seraphu. So yourself okay. is her fucking name. You, yeah. I it's see. fucking perfect. So it's very cute. The the the, the fucking show's just beautiful. Yeah, I'm going with Seraphu from Do It Yourself. Yes, we did both in a year that featured Spy Family not pick Anya as our best girl. Mm -hmm. Shame on us. Whatever, I liked it. Uh who's your best boy? The one and only one, dude, Chigio. It's gotta be, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, I, of course, I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm a little dissenter, I gotta disagree. Uh, and so, I, it, for me, it was between Shigio, uh, I, I, I did have Dingy on my short list, I did not go with Dingy. I also had Dr. Panda from Sabiki Busco, uh, Sabwiki oh, yeah. Busco, Panda. did not go with Dr. Panda. I went with our boy Raido from Ataras, uh, Aharon San. Yeah, yeah. He's just so cool, man. He's just yeah, like a Aharon fucking idiot. Aharon, actually, I, I thought about Aharon for best girl, too. Yeah, I've got her on my yeah. list. Uh, yeah, good old Raido, yeah, dude. Gotta be Raido. He's a real fucking dipshit idiot. He just does his fucking best to be a He tries friend. so hard. He's got that hard face. Like, it's, it's not the first time we've seen, oh, a guy with the hard face who's actually super nice. I'm like, yeah, but he's also an idiot. So yeah. <laughs> I love him. Yeah. Uh, and he just overthinks everything. He's he's a he's quite literally, literally a head ass. Everything. Just a real fucking head ass. This guy. Uh, and I love him. He's a good boy. Uh, but yeah, fucking Shigeo Mob gotta gotta be up there mm -hmm. too. One and only one, dude. And with that, let's go ahead and move to uh, the last little thing since we didn't talk about uh, this before. But uh, I think I think we both know the answer here. Uh, in a season that featured some really great sequels. Mm -hmm. I will name a few. Uh, MHA 6, mm -hmm. really great. Maybe the best start yep. of an MHA season in a while. Uh, Attack on Titan, I know you like that shit. Yep. I don't think you've watched any of it. Uh, for me, Ascendance of a Bookworm. We had Maiden Abyss. We had a Kaguya-sama. A lot of great sequels. But Roger, what was the best sequel series this season? Uh, the one and only one. It's got to be Mob Psycho Whoa. 103. It couldn't be anything else, man. Yeah. It was it was basically perfect. Mm-hmm. It really was. The one only, dude, yeah. How does it not sweep everything, you know? It, it can't not. Yeah. Uh, and so let us go ahead and move on to the last little bit here. Our uh, good Roger, buddies. you know, when we talk about these animes and when we do a review, mm -hmm. we have a certain set of yeah. categories. We have five different categories, each of which could get two stars for a possible yeah. total of ten stars. That's We how actually didn't work. do many of those this year. Didn't do but. a ton of them, but, you know, we're branching out. We're evolving, yeah. as, as we all must as we are all meant to do. And so, Roger, I will ask you, what is that first category we talked about? The art animation. No, it's not. It's the story and setting. Oh. I have you it wrote them down I have wrong. it backwards, yeah. Okay. The story, story and setting. setting. What's the second category? The art and animation. Nah, I think it's... No, damn it. Okay, never mind. Look, hey, start that over. Let's, we're not <laughs> clapping out. I just want you to start it over. All right. Roger, when we do a review, we have a set of categories we do. And what is that mm -hmm, first category? Mm -hmm. uh, the story and setting. What is the second one? The characters and development. Numero tres. The art and animation. Number four. The music and sound. And finally, that fifth category, that good buddy's wiggle room, that je ne sais quoi. Roger, what does that mean? I do not know what. I don't know what. And with that, See, I just Roger, had to fill it, dude. It was good. It was good shit. I want to know, what is your favorite number one what best personifies story and setting for you this year best story and setting chainsaw man very good good stuff yep love it uh it far exceeded everything <laughs> that i could have fucking imagined i'm into it uh yep. i really enjoyed that one but for me uh it had to be taking a, a show that in pretty much every way just breaks the meta uh it had to be for me akiba made war hmm. Uh, yeah. Yep. Just a lot of fun. Like I okay, I said before, like you know, it's a it's like a mob show. So like, there's this thing where like, 
all these different Yakuza shows keep taking like these hard Yakuza dudes and showing that they're super nice on the inside. They're actually super sugary sweet. Even the Yakuza video games, whereas this one's like, okay, let's take something sugary sweet and make it hard as hell. Mm-hmm. And also, I was talking to with Trey about this earlier. He was talking about how he was surprised when I mentioned review on the your last life? episode. Yeah, my boy, review your life. Uh, shout out to Trey at Target. Uh, he <laughs> he uh, was telling me he was listening to the last episode and he was really surprised when I mentioned that it has like basically no fan service. I was like, yeah, you would think that a show about maids and frilly dresses would have a ton of fan yep. service. There's basically none. And you know what's crazy is Ranko's hot as hell too. Yeah. And they just they could crank it the up. Meta, baby. They, they just keep breaking the meta. It's so good. I love that show. My favorite story and setting of Keep Made War. What do you got for characters and development? I had I couldn't um so I, I it was hard for me to decide because I was like, well, I don't want to give everything to Mob Cycle 103. But but I so I put uh Mob Cycle 103 slash spy family. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you on that one. I ended up going with a show I've talked about quite a bit at this point. Uh, but it is going to get this one as well. And that is Dance, Dance, Dance here. Ah, uh, there you go. Really great characterization. Really love these characters and the places they went with them. It's a good time. Uh, how about art and animation? Uh, art and animation? I have uh, I have Call of the Night mm, for that. That's really good. I yep. love those. I love those. I love it. It's such a beautiful show, man. Absolutely beautiful. For this one, I really, really struggled because ah, I'm like... Even now, I'm looking at my fucking list, and I'm like, is this the right call? Uh, I, I, mm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna say what I got. I'm gonna go with Lycoris Recoil. Uh, really cool show, you know, guns and flippy shit and all that good stuff, and uh, the action scenes really fucking work in this one. Lycoris Recoil is gonna get my nod for art and nice. animation. It is hard not to give it to, like, Demon Slayer Entertainment District yeah. or something, but it's Lycoris Recoil deal with it uh music and sound i got chainsaw man chainsaw man was on my short list yeah it's definitely top five i really want it got a fucking different song for every outro it's really the intro once again was pretty damn good yeah and i mean just the the sounds that they use for the fights or whatever or whenever he uh whenever dingy comes out in his chainsaw form and you hear that you just that hold on Uh, so i had chainsaw man i had bochi the rock i had healer girl which i know no one watched but me but it's cute it's about singing uh i did have call the night on for this one because man the music's good at the intro and outro and there's a couple times during the show that they let the music play when they're flying around shit really good but in the end i did end up going with your boy kong ming uh this one really could have gone either way but Kong Ming's got to get it. It's a little poppier than I usually prefer, but it's really well done. They actually let the music take center stage when they're actually performing. It's very well done. Uh, the fucking acoustic guitar flicks and slides sound good. The beat drops sound good. Even the rapping, which is hard for me to judge because it's not in my home native language, it still sounds good. It's all really good. Your boy Kong Ming is going to get my music and sound. And finally, I mean, perhaps the only one that really matters, mm-hmm. the, most, the most important thing, What's the show that, regardless of any other factors, just kept you coming back? The one you had to catch every episode of. You, maybe you can't even say exactly why you, you know, love it so much. It's funny that you put it like this. Okay. Because what? I picked two that I didn't finish. Really? Yeah. I, what? I, I couldn't I couldn't decide. I know that one of them belongs here. Okay. And I know that I will finish both of them. But I could not decide, uh, like, best Jen and Sequoia, best... What you is know, your something best that grabbed me in a way and I can't really explain, you know, totally why, you know, like it really, you know, <laughs> it took me. But it, it's 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 between Call of Night or Akiva Made War. They're both really good. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good, man. Neither neither one of them should, even though I have not finished them yet, and I wish I, I could have finished them while I was sick, but um I will finish them up soon. Uh I can't fucking tell you exactly what makes our these shows you know you know why i would recommend it over something else they're both really good yeah they're just it's just something about it man yeah i mean i can think of a hundred romantic comedies that i you know could be easily you know like pass right over call of night four but it just has something about it too there's just a there's just a fucking style to that show it's it's very 
very striking. And then of all the wild shows out there that I could recommend to mm-hmm. you, Akiba Made War is like nothing fucking else. And like, and you know, I don't know, dude. It just has it has some a, a fucking pounding heart inside of it. It's good I shit. don't know which one of these should be the one on here, the one and only one. But um, <laughs> you just got that's gonna be your thing every yeah. time now, huh? Yep, yep. It's it's you know I I didn't finish either, but I can't wait to finish other the the both of them, and you know recommend them forever. I've already recommended them plenty of times to people. It's good stuff. Um, because people do come in and ask your good buddy Roger for some recommendations. Yeah. So I like them yep. both. Yep. I like them both yep. a whole lot. Um, my Genesee Qua is gonna go to a show that really just shouldn't fucking work. It really fucking shouldn't work, but it does. And that's Birdie Wing Golf Girl Story. This show's a fucking trip, dog. I'm just gonna. Here's a quick rundown of the season. All right, so it's a young woman in this made up Euro state somewhere in Europe who hustles playing golf to provide for her Slumtown fan family while also navigating some shady mob ties. By chance, she runs into a legit pro golf girl who happens to be her age. They begin a sort of will-they-won't-they rivalry, friendship, maybe romance, that eventually sees our main girl screw over a mob boss, save her ho- uh, save her home with a boatload of save underground golf... Save her home. Save her home with a boatload of underground golf competition winnings, and then fuck off to Japan where she realizes somehow, oh, I can speak perfect Japanese somehow. And then she integrates, gets integrated into the pro girls golf school. None of that should work. But it fucking does. It shows a goddamn trip. It's absolutely gonna be... <laughs> some kind of bullshit where like she's actually from japan that's why she can speak japanese or some shit like that she doesn't remember her childhood blah 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 that Mm -hmm. kind of thing she was trained by some dude who's real fucking good at golf though and so like the it just doesn't make sense but it's so fucking goofy and so fucking funny and everything about goddamn birdie wing just works and apparent i can't wait to get more apparently more is coming i'm super hyped for it uh and you know what? Let's go ahead and while while we're talking about what's coming up, what's some stuff? Let's face the future for a moment. Look into the coming year. Mm-hmm. What's some shit that you that's been announced that you're hyped for? Well, if you look right behind you, dude, uh, you can see that I finally got me one of those draw like John Enderoids. You there. sure fucking did. My wife got me one for Christmas, and Twinsies. you know, and you know what? You know what? It's got a second season coming it's up. It's coming, I'm baby. Very excited for it's it. It's fucking coming, baby. Um, Vinland Saga. That's supposed to finally. Yeah, drop. I'm trying to think of things that are not Vinland Saga. Okay. I was gonna save that for the end. Well, I'm just gonna say it now because fuck yeah. you. I love Vinland. Saga. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 nothing that I'm more pumped for than fucking Vinland Saga. Here, let me just. I'm just gonna pull up uh, 2023 in anime on Wikipedia. Great way. Do we got Jujutsu Kaisen next year? Ah, I'm not sure actually. Um, but but I mean, in anime. let's see. So this is going to be like everything, including yeah. new stuff. So there's going to be a lot. Yeah, here, the the only thing that could even possibly go above how stoked I am for Vinland Saga is Domestic Girlfriend season two, and you know they ain't going to do it for me. Wow, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that near Automata anime is finally going to drop. Yeah. Oh, do you remember Misfit of Demon King Academy? <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. That's getting a season two, apparently. Um, Inspector season two. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, Ooh, baby. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And some people were Vampire, down on that show, but gonna, I like that show. Comes out the same day as Vampire Dies in No Time season two, according to mm. Wikipedia. That's going to be a good fucking time. Hell yes. You got Villain Saga. You didn't watch Bofuri. It's a goofy little isekai. I don't know that you'd like. Well, it's a VR game. Anime, yeah. Whatever. Um, let's see. There's a ton on here. Yes, April, Birdie Wing, Golf Girl Story, Season Two. Oh, baby. Ah, Swordsman uh, Village Arc, April for Demon Slayer, uh, is good, what it's currently good. scheduled for. So that should be coming. Uh, oh yeah, they have they have dropped the trailers for that shit. Ooh, Bubble Suit Gundam Witch for Mercury Part Two in April. So I'll have that to look forward to. Uh, yeah. There's. T- oh yes. I almost forgot. I they feel like did, they just dropped a new trailer very soon. They did announce or very this recently. One. And thank God, I was. You know, there's a thing we started doing this uh, past year where we would challenge each other watching shows. And thank God that you challenged me to watch Ancient Magus's Bride. Oh yes, of course. Because season two is on its way, baby. It's supposed to be dropping in April, looks like. 
Uh, some more bleeds. Jujutsu Kaisen is marked for July. We'll see if it actually shows up. Of course, subject, you know, dates can change on any of these, but yeah, there's a ton of cool shit coming. Getting a Jujutsu Kaisen and a Demon Slayer in the same year. Oh, man. Fuck yes, dude. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. But yeah, it's going to be a hell of a fucking season, y'all. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Not to mention all the originals that are going to be dropping. Uh, I know there's something on here called Daddy Buddies or Buddy Daddies. Mm. Uh, and I don't know what that is, but it sounds like it's right up our alley. Dang it, dude. There was, <laughs> there was a, recently another trailer that released for something and I was super excited for it. Man, there's going to be. And I don't remember what it was. going to be tons of them. Yep. But yeah, uh, it's been a hell of a year. It's going to be a hell of a year. Excuse me. I'm hiccuping now. We're both just making all manner of upsetting sounds. So let's get the fuck yeah, out of here before, flu, we, baby. before we tear up your ears any more than we already have. Uh, shall I start with the plugs, Roger? Yeah, while you please, look up this please thing. Please do it, dude. All right. Uh, thank you so much for listening. If you want to tell us any of your top fives, your favorites, you heard all the categories, by all means, drop them wherever you see the name The Good Buddies. Uh, unless it's those two juggalos on Spotify, because that's not us. We're not those good buddies. We're the Good Buddies Anime Podcast, and just by listening, you're our good buddy. Thank you so much. There's a number of ways you can hit us up. Of course, one of the easiest is on the YouTube channel, Rapid Kick Media, where you may be listening to this right now. Go ahead and leave us a comment while you're at it. Like and subscribe and click that bell so we can send you some notifications. We'd love to hear from you guys, and we'd love to send you more stuff because we love of it and also check out some let's plays while you're there my boy's been over here new trigun kind of too oh yeah new trigun fuck yeah damn dude it's gonna be a big year um let's see uh you can also hit us up on the discord that's the other best way to hit us up uh the good buddies discord is going to be in the description of wherever you are right now uh and if you're listening to the podcast by all means go ahead and give us a five stars on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcasts uh and leave us a comment it's the best way to spread the word thank you so much we also have a ton of other social medias we may or may not use twitters and facebooks and whatnot for as long as they still exist uh and maybe we'll be on there sometimes every now and then someone will tag me in something uh or tag the twitter and something or be like hey have y'all seen this and i'm like haha yes we talked about it <laughs> uh but yeah good old time love hearing from you guys thank you so much with that let's go under our musicians thank you so much married with sea monsters aka the mary janes for use of our opening theme paper doll now that band doesn't exist anymore but that song does it still whips ass you can find it on married with sea monsters bandcamp.com and some of their other stuff on spotify or anywhere you see married with sea monsters great stuff really love them thank you so much uh even though y'all aren't really a band anymore bye bye sandland 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 what got a trailer hell? that's what it was what the hell is sandland it is uh a you like you like uh, how i just jumps out of nowhere i was yeah. i was soothing everybody i was, was kind of uh, yeah, i was kind of getting through, mellow with through, the plugs yeah, there yeah. i was getting mellow with him kind of somebody's just i broke off through my flu to yell somebody out was listening listening to the dulcet tones of brandon as they drifted off to sleepy land and then you just sandland yeah <laughs> what's the what the fuck is sandland um I don't know this one. Uh, uh, Akira Toriyama. Oh, guy, yeah, it was Dragon of, Ball guy. Yeah, yeah, it's one of his. It was in. It was in Shonen, Shonen Jumps, uh, back whenever it first started publishing here. Oh, like old. I stuff. fucking loved it, dude. Sandland. Uh, yeah, Sandland. It is this wild sand inspired, uh, you know, almost post apocalyptic. Sand inspired. Uh, yeah, man. What does like, that mean? like it's very sandy. It's a desert base. Or okay. Whatever. Yeah. Kind of like, like desert punk. I was going to say, yeah. like some desert punk yeah. shit. All right. Not sand inspired, but sand filled. Um, Sandscape. Yeah, Sandscape. Uh, I'm very excited for it. All right. I don't remember much about the story. I remember that I loved it, though. And they released a trailer for it, and it looked real good. All right. Well, I guess we have had to look behind yeah. to check out this trailer. Now, now I remember dork. what my trailer was. Motherfucker says, Sandland. Just out of nowhere. Sandland. Uh, well, let, I will continue with thanking our musicians now. Thank you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our good buddy Thomas Tastes Better, a.k.a. Dungeon Witch, uh, on, uh, uh, on YouTube for the use of our closing uh, theme on the on the on the rapid kick me on the on the mm -hmm. actual fucking youtube yeah part of the show jesus you really threw me off with sandland I'm sorry, sorry. sandland uh, thank you again that's hoss aka thomas tastes better on instagram aka dungeon witch on youtube for that closing theme which is called the buddy's good again uh you can find hoss at thomas tastes better on instagram and dungeon witch on youtube thank you again hoss thank you thank you mm. and a shout out to our good buddy a petty theft <laughs> He's on the Discord now. You he is join. on the Discord now. Right we had there. a quick chat. I was like, it was like 
you know, middle of the work day. There's a bunch of people needing help. So I yep. tried to chat a little bit, but I couldn't really it's get okay. in there much. But uh, shout out to Haas. Apparently, Agresco season five, too. In oh, fuck February. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. I missed that one. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, going to be a good old time. Uh, thank you so much, Haas. Uh, not, I already said Haas. God damn it. You keep, you keep jumping uh, in. Dr. Stone season three. Jesus Christ. It's going to be a big ass season. Yeah. It's going to be a year, big year. Yeah. Huge fucking year. Uh, again, thank you, Papetti Theft, for the closing theme on the podcast portion of the show, which we are still calling Sweet Anime Dreams. Th- Dreams. Thank you again, Papetti Theft. You can find Papetti Theft on Twitter and on SoundCloud at Papetti Theft. And that about does it. We got there. We did it. Roger, mm-hmm. it's been a hell of a year. Uh, and it's been a good time doing the show with you and uh you know it's with that that i think i really need to bring us down and say that since there's gonna be a spy family movie in 2023 i'm gonna i think it's time for me to move on so i will not be doing the podcast anymore um i gotta i gotta quit man and so this will be my last podcast i appear on okay this year thank you (laughs) fuck you dude Looking at me all crazy. Dumb as hell, dude. Fuck you, man. I'll be back next year, though. Don't you worry. Don't you fucking worry. Don't you fucking worry, baby. Uh, so from all... Are you ready to go? Or are you still oh, looking I'm up re- shit? I'm ready, dude. There's still a lot looking of stuff. Up shit. I looked on, at man. a lot of stuff. You looked at a lot of stuff. Yeah, I looked There's at a, a lot of stuff. There's a ton coming out, yeah. uh, not the least of which uh, is all those things we mentioned, and it's going to be a good old time. Roger, do you have one to take us out on? Yeah, man. <laughs> is it just you screaming sampling? Yes. Okay. I'll do it too. Uh, so for all of us here at the Good Buddies Anime Universe, have a happy new year. We hope you enjoyed it. And I am your good buddy, Brandon. Sandland! <laughs> he is your good buddy, Roger. Sandland. I, I had to flu. It was terrible. Love you guys. Sandland! One, two, one, two, three. Sandland! <laughs>